All right, fans of Bob's Barn Workshop, here we go. I'm just going to do a little mail call today. Some... This will speed up progress a lot. I can get back on the project here. Have you guessed what it is yet? I guess you probably have. Come on, it's hard one-handed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ah. A new 12 volt, 12 amp hour motorcycle style battery. Sealed lead acid. I'm sure it's an AGM. I don't have to mess with it. And there you go. That's for the starter. You can get these pretty cheap. This is this is a cheap battery, I'll admit. But I've had uh, friends say they've had really good luck with these cheap batteries off on Amazon. So we'll be working on wiring the uh, the go kart here pretty soon. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you back. Then. Bob's Barn Workshop friends, here we are back in the barn today, working on the go kart. And I got looking at this and thinking about this and reading stories and seeing guys online doing this. And one of the problems they have with these big horsepower engines is they're bending the shafts and especially the smaller 7 8 shaft. So I've decided, I bought it, ordered another bearing set. I'm going to mount it right near the flange here, near the spindle or near the, the uh, sprocket. So what I'm going to do is, as you see this thing that looks kind of like a guard, I'm going to cut this loose, and I'm going to move it over to here. And then I'm going to put the gear uh, bearing on there. So um, what I'm going to do is get the Sawzall and cut this. I guess you don't really need to see me do that. But uh, I'll bring it back when I'm welding it Okay, on. no judgment, no judgment, but... I did get it welded back in, in a position where I can put up some little bar strap. Now look at how small this is, it's only eighth inch. That holds the whole rear axle. I am putting in quarter inch thick pieces of bar, so uh, only three or four inches long. I blew through here a little bit, I had to build up some ugly warts. But again, it's, it's just, well for one thing it's going to guard the chain the sprocket from, from bumps and logs and uh, secondly it's got to give me a brace for my uh, my center bearing so now we got to pull this one side of the bearing off loosen up the other side a little bit and drop that down slide the old bearing off slide the new bearings in Put the old bearing back in, put it back into position. We'll figure out where we're going to weld the braces. All right, so I got the two nuts out. They held my uh, outer bearing, and I'm going to try to just hold that in position and slide him off. It actually feels pretty good, although it's gunky, but I don't care. Gunky means it won't rust, doesn't it? Pretty good looking bearing. Feels perfectly fine. All right. So now we need to get the new one on. Well, let's clean this off with some solvent first. What are we going to use? How about some just good old Peaton Blaster? That's good at cutting crap, ain't it? stuff right here. It's only got to go on the uh, the points of it though. Let's see if we can get it on. If I can find out where I laid it down. Huh. 
guess it really don't matter which way it goes, but it's the same kind of bearing and a two bolt flange. Of course, one's got to go on first. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. All right, zippy tool. Oh, zippy tool. Can a big yellow drill disappear, huh? Just tell me that. How about this guy? All right, we're gonna try the flat disc. Excuse me. Now make sure we put the other clamshell on. And now we can actually lift this back up into position again. Let me clean this with some PB blaster. <sighs> That's just a nice solvent to clean crap off with. You know, look at it. Look at the grease come off of that sand and grit and who knows what. Hey, people have played with this thing in the past and I'm sure they're gonna, I'm gonna play with it in the future, so out in the mud and the dirt. It's a little bit loose in there with what we want, so it'll self-center. and. surface right off. It's kind of like a ball joint because you see the way that bearing is curved and these bearing flanges, carrier flanges are curved that allows for misalignment in the mounting brackets to the shaft. It allows this bearing to self-orient itself. the real position of the bearing. Alright. And the shaft. So if there's any misalignments here. Miss who? The misalignment beauty contest. Oh, I put the stupid lock on the other side. I'm just going to put the bolts in right now.
back the way them were. Ugh, my hearing protection is dangling in my face. Whip that across the barn. I'll find that some other day when I... get old. I was going to do this from the bottom of the motor mount, but positioning these things would be so much harder with the motor mount in there. So I was hoping I was just going to stub these braces up from right here on the rail, if you can see that all right. Right here on the rail, stub up to this. She'll be there just like that. See, I got that 18 horsepower motor. I don't want it bending my bending my axle. So this is how I'm preventing it. It'll be pulling up, which I won't be stressing the welds because those butt welds will be pulling up against the frame. And the engine mount is going to be here, so it's going to be pulling up against the engine mount structure mainly. So I don't think that's going to be an issue for us, kids. Well, that was an issue I was worried about getting taken care of, and we're working on it. Now, let me see here. Everything is so crowded in here. Let me get this out of the way. I made a mess, folks. My shop is a mess. I should be in here cleaning it before I move on any further. But. Let's get this axle bearing in there, and then uh, we'll figure out where we're going with that. Um, I got some bar stock here. I got 316, so which is probably strong enough. But I don't think it's going to be long enough. Get two pieces out of this. Oh yes it is. Okay. So what am I gonna do? I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna tip them a little bit. So I got one tipped in this way. Yeah, that ain't gonna be quite long enough. Well if I weld it over one right there. It's just pulling up on these areas. So let me just cut this in half and we'll see if it's long enough. I got other metal. So I've got my first brace from the bearing down to the cross shaft and it's all ground so I can weld it. And then we'll take this one off and we'll grind it so we, it'll touch right there and we'll rearrange the rest of the Thing. So let's get that done. Okay, so to review, we cut this brace off, which was welded over here. Moved it over closer to the center. 
closer to the sprocket where my 18 horsepower engine is going to be pulling like a horse and uh, put the new bearing on the shaft and I found some 3 16 bar to uh, weld it to the brace. Now the chain is going to be pulling up on this and that's why these don't have to be particularly thick because it's just a pulling force not a pushing or anything it's going to be pulling right up on it. So that's just to uh, take a little bit of stress off my axle. I got 18 bucks into it I think it was worth it just to have the prevention. Um, so now we can move on to doing other things. I still need to figure out how I'm going to get my engine mounted in here. Uh, I want to drop it in and try it without the gas tank on it and take the air cleaner off and the muffler so that I mean, I would leave the gas tank. Oh, I know what I need to work on next, though. I need to work on the throttle linkage right on the side of the motor under there. The couple of bolts that mount that engine. There's a couple of bolt holes in there. You'll see one there by the fuel line and one back here. I want to see if... I can use those to put a little metal plate and I can make some sort of bell crank to uh, do my throttle. I've got the rod. I need some kind of good return spring though. I can maybe use the return spring from what was up there. But I gotta take the tank off to do it and then fit the tank back on or remotely mount the tank. Alright, hold on. Yeah.